What's up, Slots? Welcome to another Decadent Pack Opening video! Because, you know, you thought pack opening videos were gone from YouTube, but then you're like, BOOM! Let's open some more shit! Woo! That woo was not me, by the way. My woo would be very more manly and masculine. Because that's the ideals that I go for. <laughs> I'm joined today by John the Baptist. Hello. J John John Tent. John Tent. Hashtag John Tent. That's what he wants to call it. This is Decadent John Tent. I have some boosters that I bought on my travels. I like to pick up old sealed product, mainly to have it on my shelf, and then when I walk past it, I smell it a little bit and get an erection. But the other reason is to chaos draft it. But today, I thought I'd treat John. John likes opening packs. I, like opening packs, I right? love opening packs. He doesn't like drafting or actually playing magic. He's one of those fucking weirdos. So we're going to open these. What's the order we're going to open them? This has to be the last one. Okay. Because this has the biggest hits. Should we do it in, in reverse order? So... Flip it back and reverse it. Yep. So we go Abyssin Restored. Right. Then Dark Ascension. Right. Then Zendikar. Why are they now in that order? Because now we've got the... You meant start here, end here. Don't do that, John! <laughs> <laughs> so, John started back in Dark Ascension. Is that correct? I started... Well... I started when New Frexia and Innistrad were the more recent sets. So, oh, so you didn't start at Dark Ascension, but that's no. the stuff that was out at the time. Dark Ascension okay. was the first, like, box, re like, set release that I was around for. So you're basically a baby. I am. For all intents and purposes. Yeah. For anyone who's watched those this, like, I years. started an Ixalan. Yeah, yeah, those, those, <laughs> those eight right, years. You can do the honours for this one, then. Oh, that's very kind of you. Right. I want you to crack it. We're going to go through commons and uncommons, too. I'm going to place them here. We're going to talk briefly. If the cards are dog shit, we don't care about them. We won't care about them, though. Make sure you sniff it, because the card stock was better back then and the card smelt nicer back then. How long ago was this? This was 2012, 2011? Wow. 2012. I'm only 21. I know. So I don't even remember that year. I was just spunk on my mother's tits. That's how pregnancy works, right? Yeah, it doesn't smell quite as profound. What, the spunk on my mother's tits? Or... I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. I don't want to be in this video on. anymore. Just like, just... <laughs> right, place the first comment here. What have we got? Score of Alison. So... Hey. A limited card that cares about angels. There's also a scroll of Grizzle Brands. Yes. One that, that, that cares about demons. Yes, so the archetypes in this format, though, is angels and demons is like a pseudo tribal thing. Yeah, so you have the, 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 the war between the angels and demons over the uh, opening of the Hell Vault. Yeah. You've got humans fighting against that. Um, it's battle cruiser magic as well. A lot of the cruisers are just bigger. Yeah. There's a lot of big angels and big demons, and the idea was that you could then. That's how you'd kill shit. Yeah. Or your opponent. Mental what is this? agony. Oh, well, it looks like Basically, he's in agony. It's like a mind twist for one more mana and it hits someone for two. I wouldn't compare this to mind twist in any way. Not mind twist, I sorry, mind rot, I apologise. <laughs> I was like, yes, that can't abandon legacies. <laughs> mind rot. <laughs> Let's do one um, them. Would you play this in limited? No. Nah, me neither. I'm not a fan of those kind of discard packs in limited. And when we talk about limited, by the way, we're talking a bit about its own format, but we will also be talking a little bit about as if it's a chaos draft, right? Yeah. We'll do a pack on the corner. Borderline Ranger? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it gets your land, it's doesn't it? Decent, yeah. Put it into play? Land in the your hand. Yeah. I'll put that in standard. Yeah. In the uh, in the Thrag Toss deck. I mean, this, it, this kind of just sit, uh, like, you, it, this is kind of like a cookie cutter kind of creature where the types change, but the effect stays the same. Yeah, get a land and put so you've got, like, out. in uh, Guilds of Ravnica. You've got a guild. You well, you've got, got a should be better one because you've got gates. District Guide, which yeah. also gets you gates. But is that three or four mana? Three mana. So yeah, you can get this. It's so a 2, two, it's a two, two for 3 that gets you a basic or sometimes maybe... That said, I think District Guide might be an elf. Yes. An elf, human. like an elf scout. And as a, so both pretty yeah. tribes, to be yeah. fair. But this card saw a little bit of play, I think. I remember casting it in standard. Yeah. But uh, so so As a ramp guide, creature, right? it's fine. It's not ramp, though. It's a hand job. Okay, well, I mean, it's fixing. Fuck yeah. Fixing creature. We've got a fleeting distraction. Yeah, it's a... It's, it's fine. a cantrip. It's I one guess. mana draw a card, John. If it's basically a, astrolabe. If you if you've got effects that care about spells being cast, then sure. But I don't think or had that. to kind of get someone in an attack step. But and the art's got some devils getting distracted while holding a human heart. Mm -hmm. No, it's just an apple. It's not a human heart. Oh. It's just an apple. That's pointing. Oh, the camera's away. There we go. Just an apple. So. We now have another uh, an example of the uh, tribal differences. Weirdly tribal in that it's a zombie that can't block humans. I guess because you also have Angel of Glory's Rise and Zombie Apocalypse from Dark Ascension, we might be seeing later. That, yeah, that have, I mean like, the, the flavour is that it's hunted. That's that's why it's got this weird thing on being brought by humans. It's actually yes. running away from humans. The point is, Avacyn Restored was the set where the humans and the not evil bastards turn the tide. Yes. Well, not the monstrous things. So the, in the other sets, there's a lot of Preying upon, literally called yeah. prey upon, for example, yes. and like werewolves and zombies and vampires killing humans. And Avacyn Restored, they're like, 
YOLO, Avistar's back, get fuck scrubbed. Yeah. And that's why the Hunter Gold is now. Yeah. So it's a very nice use of flavour. It's a one, two for one man like Carbrock humans. I probably wouldn't play that. Speaking of. Oh. So probably it won't, it's terrible. The turn of the tides. Protector. What does it do? It gives protection. Two, three, right into the battlefield target which you control the protection from the colour of your choice. It's like a really shit mum. But I guess actually limited two, three, four, four does that. It's actually not that bad. Okay. And also in Battle Cruiser Magic, you just get one of your big dudes. This is um Warfare Silverheart in this? Was Soul Bond in Avacy Restored? So, I think so too. Oh, yeah. Just turn to look out and shit, right? So, you oh, oh, well, that was a very good question there. Soulbound, a spectral gar 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 gate 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 guard. Spectral gate guard. It's a gate guard, but it doesn't carry out gates. I'm sick of this inconsistency. So basically, in this at common, a lot of them were just keyworded for the, the soul bond gate keywords. So in this case, vigilance, but you have ones here: first strike and haste and trample and. There were some rare and not rare ones. They gave more interesting stuff. ones, like Double this... Strike from Silver Blade Paladin. Well, that's, a, that's a rare. The common yeah. here, the 2 5 gives Vigilance, which I guess yeah, is that's okay. That's fine. A 5 mana 2 5 of Vigilance that gives another Vigilance isn't terrible. Yeah. Definitely a bit playable. No, no constructive playable cards yet, other than perhaps Portal and Project yeah. Push. Soul Cage Fiend. Soul Cage Fiend. It's a 3 mana 3 2 that when it, ends, when it dies, sorry, each player loses 3 life. It's a good aggro um, creature, I guess. Yeah. Trade totally fine. Kind of trades up. Stats are okay. Yeah, it's almost passes the Villa test. I'd yeah, play yeah. it limited if my deck was aggressive. Uh, yeah. I don't think you could play an aggressive deck in this format, weirdly. Really. Yeah. Speaking of Soulbound Christmas Bottoms that have keywords. <laughs> Look at the difference, though. Would you like a 5 mana 2 5 that makes a creature vigilant for Or a 6 mana or 6 4 that gives six it four trample. With trample itself when it's Soulbound yeah. and gives something else trample. Yeah. Green was, uh, yeah, that was way. That, that's a common. That's, that's a whole cycle of each one of each color, I think. Mm -hmm. I think the green was best. Was Tandem Lookout common or uncommon? Uh, that was cards. Uh, we've got uh, last common, I think. Yep. Which Having the scab. scab. So the scabs, scabs, scabs in like Innistrad and Dark Ascension had a. Most of them had an effect which they had to exile something, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Had to exile yeah, something from the graveyard. Additional cost to cast them. Yeah. So you like, so like Scarb Ruinator was exile three creature cards from your graveyard to cast it, but it was a three mana five four with flying. It might have been a six one. And could be really cast. Big. Be cast from a break card as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So they had a downside in having to cast XL things, but they had an upside in being big. However, this one doesn't have that anymore. No, it just bounces things. Whenever it attacks, turn another creature you control. So it's still got a downside. It, All I the scams have downside. It depends, because that could be an upside with like the of protector. Course, of like course. you could you could twist it so that it actually is an advantageous trigger. Yeah, if it turns creatures to your hand and use the ATBs is obviously it's gas, but in limited your ETB's not going to be as good. Unless you drafted around it, obviously. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'd pick this quite highly in a Chaos Draft. Just I mean, it's every... a 4, 5, or 6. And you take every ETB going, right? Exactly. Like, you get an Eternal Witness out of your Master's Pack yeah. or whatever, and you're loving it. We've just hit some money. Really? In the Uncommon, An uncommon slot. In the Uncommon slot. Go in on. Avacyn Restored. We talked about this before we started. Blood Artist. Ah, 4 bucks? $4. $4? Four dollars. Four dollars? Oh my god! I'll, I'll play some cash register sounds now. Yeah. Some... This is a good hit. Though. It's a good hit, particularly Uncommon. So and you played this in our Can Land again? We, I did. We'll the I mean, it's an Aristocrats. Kind of staple. staple. It's so good. It's staple in multiple formats. It's good in command. It's, it's good interesting. In... It like they, they there's a there was a change in how they operated this kind of effect. It, this targets players. Yep. It doesn't. So instead of it being like a symmetrical, all opponents get drained for one and you gain one. This is target player. I think it's a bit. I think it's a lot worse. Honestly, the, the, the reworking's better because yeah. these things can't get through like witchbane orbs and giving hex. Exactly. Yeah. Like that. So you've got you've got those kind of. You have to get through and target a player, and obviously that's not always going to be possible. Yeah, this so, card's yeah. gas. This is this is by a massive margin so far yeah. the most. But it's also card. one of, like apart from like Zulaport Cutthroat, and also the, the well, I guess the difference is this this is any creature, it and any creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas so you, Zulaport Cutthroat and all that kind of lot, they care about your creatures dying. Yeah. Oh, oh, they think about other people's creatures trying. Yes. So that's it. So yeah, I, I remember that Zulaport was worse in some way. Yes. And you start talking about the difference in how the templating of the ability works. So like, well, that's strictly better. But the thing to remember is the majority of effects like this recently. There was another like five mana ones recently. So the Vindictive like, Vampire was yeah. four mana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, that was your creature, not opponents, right? Yes. Yeah. So this one cares about opponents' creatures. So when you wrath like a board of like forty yeah. creatures in command of this in play, yeah. you just dome someone and kill them. Yeah. Uh, this card's gas. Yeah. Absolutely. Blood gas. Art is great. Uh, this is one I don't recall seeing this card ever, but 
Gang of Devils. Uh, so I avoided red in this format at all possible. I think it was basically green, black. This is the one when it dies. Yeah, so most of the devils still do what you see in the devils of the current sets now when they die, they ping shit. Mm -hmm. You see it on like, the, the card that um, Timbalt makes and yes. Spark and stuff. Yeah. And this was the set that introduced devils doing that. I don't even know if devils existed in Magic prior to Avatar Story. It might have been a new thing. And quite frankly, it was boring as shit and they all sucked. Yeah. The only good one was Charmbreaker Devils, which is like a, a card that I just recur cards that very, very randomly and had like a a real weird front end uh, prowess when you can only cast a spell you got plus super zero. But the rest of the common and uncommon ones fucking sucked us unlimited. But it's a three mana oh no. No sorry, it's a six mana three three. Yeah that's it's that's pretty bad. shit. We have I think possibly Oh hang on, whoa go back. The three damage that it does is it's spread between one, two, or three target creatures or players. Okay. So, I mean, it's actually a removal spell on the body, yeah. so it's not, not as so bad you as could, you could ping a few things and clear a board, so... Oh, combo, John. Play this, play this, get this kill, shoot three things, ping them to death. That's fine. Yeah. I'm taking this and I'm wheeling this, John. This is potentially modern playable. I'm not sure if it does, does get played in those lists, but we have Kessic Malcontents. Yes, this was a, um, a human playable card, right? As about for does damage to the turn penalties. Yeah, this was humans. a card that was in the sideboard and sometimes main decks of humans and still is, I think. Yeah. Like, as a way of killing people, that means not going exactly, to Exactly, like if you just need a little bit more reach. So, so weirdly, we're talking about how good Blood Artist is. This probably is more modern than Blood Artist, stuff, honestly. I think Blood Artist is, is kind of those uh, eternal and singleton formats where you have, where you can utilize. Well, if I was playing humans in Canlander, this would definitely be an inclusion. Oh, for sure. Classic Mountains. Right, so before we get to the rare, we have planes. Basic planes. Uh, basic planes. planes. I like the planes in this set. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if I'm labouring the points about what I like about this set, but the like the fucking just the art and the, the the sense of hope and glory and shit in the mm. planes in this set. Um, well, they're all. I think in Amazon Restored, they had the arts of the lands in Astrad and then brightened, brightened them up. Yeah. Not literally the art, but I think they were actually changed ever so slightly. Like, yeah. They add sunbeams and shit. Yeah. So um, this is a, a, a relic that we, I think, for the most part, we've moved away from, but in Throne we move back to, which is tokens or art cards. <laughs> yes, Literally useless cardboard! doesn't do anything. I mean, you can look up the Dark Ascension rules on the website, or you can get an event deck. Wow, that's a throwback. Fuck that card. Yeah, useless. There you go. We have a rare. It's okay uh, if you can build around it. <laughs> Infinite Reflection. Enchanted Creature, I can't remember what this There's lots of does. words on this. Enchanted Creature, when Infinite Reflections enters the battlefield attached to a creature, each other non-token creature you control becomes a copy of that creature. Non-token creatures you control enter the battlefield as a copy of Enchanted Creature. I think this might be in, was in Commander last year in the enchantment deck, yeah, It maybe? doesn't surprise me. It feels yeah. like it might have been. I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, the card's kind of weird. Very, very, very weird. It has a powerful effect, but it needs to stick to do it. I mean, put that on a Critter of Behemoth. Yeah. I but never expect the creative because all the next creatures don't know is not the creative behemoths as well. Yeah. Should have an army of creative behemoths. Yeah. But it's still not that great. It's fun, but I ain't picking it. What's your pick in this pack? Pack one, pick one. Uh, well, at least two, honestly. Uh. Because obviously there's a human tribal aspect of things. This is fine. Also, Borderland Ranger because of Limited as yeah. well. I mean, I if this is Chaos reasonable. Draft, I think I generally I'd probably pick this because yeah. I'm going to go with the second well, I mean, However, this... I'd be tempted to pick this and then hoof up every single human I can yes. and then fucking get some. That's, that's one of the benefits of it being such a wide tribal thing is that humans obviously are, are, are yeah. across all sets. You're always going to have human kind of characters and creatures to use. Well, it's one of the big problems as to why the deck is so good modern and to the yeah, extent legacy is because... The the, the, the the tribe's only going to get better, it never gets worse. Mm -hmm. But yeah, okay, so we'll, we'll, this is the like, obvious pick. So if I'm chaos drafting, I want some of my money back, so I'll be, getting, I'll be taking the blood out But it's also four bucks and it's also a very good card. It's a very good card on its own, and you're more than likely going to have die triggers and stuff when you're playing that. Tell anyway. us below, what would you take? Is it one of these three? Is it one of these cards? Are we are we sleeping on how good Havengul Scab can be? Pathbreaker Worm, maybe not I mean, one, pick one, but as far as the vanilla stats go, it's Chunky good, Boy, though. like... yeah. I still think I'd take this. Yeah. Or if I'm fancy chance, I'd take this. Yeah. Or if I'm already in green, this is pack two or some shit, I'd take this. I think pack one Ranger, one. I think you'd want yeah, to yeah. wheel. It's fixing, like, and it's it's a human body, so it also works with Kessic Mouth Contents as well. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. John, catch! Thanks, Vince. That was a good catch. Come cool. on, then, crack it open, let's see. Right, let's go. Common so, by common. If you're enjoying this format, by the way, please let us know in the comment section below, because this is different to what I've done for other pack openings. I kind of enjoy talking about reminiscing about old sets. Mm. Uh, okay, here we go. First common of Dark Ascension, the Despiteful Shadows. Oh, fun historical thing about this set is that this was the first set that I went to a GP for. Oh, really? Gravecrawler and Sorin 
uh, Lord of Innistrad item yes. was called with the chase rares. Grave Caller was like 20 bucks because mm. zombies are the deck in standard, and Sauron was like 30. And I was cracking prize packs. Well, the few way well, hacks I sucked. You say that yeah. we looked up the prices of what the hits in this set were. Grave Crawler still, still is. But $10. Sauron was nowhere to be seen. Sauron, no, he's gone. Like, I'm surprised he doesn't hold a few dollars. Used, used, used to be in uh, Black, Black Black White White Tokens. Because his down really was an emblem. Yeah. 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 So we have an enchant creature. Enchant creatures don't damage. It does that much damage to its controller. So this is kind of turning an opponent's creature into a Slavid doll. Maybe I should make a, a deck where I play this in Black There's Black a few of these. There's there's another one in... Pariah, the white one. Yeah, there's also one in um, one. Kamigawa block. They have one. I think Pariah was originally in Kamigawa, was it? It was in 10th as well. I think and there's a red Pariah white is one. white, whereas the one in Kamigawa is black. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called like um, like Cloak of Leeches or some shit. Yes. It's one of those. And there's this, and there's also a red white one in the Ravnica block as well. There's a, yes. there's a few. Yes. Anyway, yes. moving on. Not the best card for limited. Pauper. This is pauper playable, this. Hunger of the Hellpack. Morbid. Let's talk about that. That was the mechanic for the set. When yeah. things die, things get better. Yeah. Uh, the most famous morbid card, almost definitely a Tragic Slip, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, Tragic Slip is borderline playable in older formats now. It's just obviously got I mean, it, it, like, better in, in, in context of the set, and it's of, of the time that it was released, it killed Blightsteel Colossus. <laughs> And thought, yeah, of course it did. Yeah, of course it did. 100%. It also, it could kill um, like a crater hoof during that part of time killed, as well. Basically kill, anything. Kill, no one was playing it, but an Avacyn or a Grizzle Brand, because yeah. those cards didn't see much play in standard. No. But yeah, Blightsteel Colossus was the set prior to this one. and then but Well, Blightsteel was in Mirrodin Besieged. Yeah, so we had we had so, into this. We had the five card fights that yeah. I had the Elishnorn. Did Blightsteel Colossus see any play in standard? I don't think so. No. Obviously, because you... But, it was, but so, Tragic Slip killed everything. From yeah. Elishnorns to... Voring collectors or any any other weird thing that you Absolutely. Uh, but this is the more with one that puts counters and stuff. So this is yeah. played in the green aggro green, deck. Green sly pop-up. kind of decks, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Curve out and. Because you play like a wild cantor and then you sacrifice wild cantor for mana <laughs> and then <laughs> slam that onto it's just a, a zero value. Onto a, like a Sohana ledge walker. I know, yeah. I know. But like two for one. <laughs> I think I'll never play that deck because that two for one sounds brutal. It, yeah, it's, it's grim. Yeah. Um, here we go, we've got uh, an okay flyer, we've got an Aphania Secret. Oh, I play this card all the time. This is one of the highest picks in... Uh, oh, wait, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just going off from memory. I recall LSV saying this is one of the best blue cards in the set. Because it's just a four mana, two, three flyer yep. that flashes in and catches stuff. Yeah. So it's a removal spell Absolutely, well. yeah. So people would swing with their two, two, and you were like, fucking got your friend. I, I mean, think flash so inherently is a strong mechanic yeah. to have. And like... Yeah, I mean, as a 2-3 two, two, three three, flyer for 4 isn't the worst thing in the I world. I don't either. recall this set having particularly strong... Like, if you if you go back... I think this was drafted with Innistrad, was it? Yes, oh, sorry. 100%. So you've got a lot of weedy spirits. Yep. Obviously, like, Lingering Souls. Lingering Souls. Um, uh, the other one has a 3-mana one that makes... A midnight midnight Haunting. Yeah, yeah there you it. go. Which was instant speed, but only one shot. And look at all the zombies. All the zombies are like 2-2. Two, two, two exactly, yeah. So you, you can literally just... Actually, not including the scams. So no, but you can eat something quite easily with this. So. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I think this card was very high up in the pick order, I remember. And I played a lot of it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Either that or I'm misremembering it. I played it a lot and it was shit. One of the two, but I thought it was good. We have a Money multi-format <laughs> all-star. Thought Scour. Okay, this is actually probably our best hit so far in terms of Constructed. This card... <laughs> So my first ever like modern deck that I played a shit ton of was the Dell Red Blue Delver deck, and this was fucking absurd because mm-hmm. you just thought scout yourself on turn one, and next you crack two fetches and you're casting treasure cushion on turn yep. two, and it still sees play now in like uh, the Red Blue Phoenix deck mm-hmm. and other stupid shit as well, and even Go Mags and Phoenixes throughout time. In uh, in relation to what you were saying, I played uh, Death Shadow modern quite a lot. And I think you ran some number of these for Gomax. Yeah, Gilmax. probably. If you're playing Gomax, like, 100%. I think, what's it, and even Tasker. Stuff. Yeah, Tasker, there's like, I think, I think that, that this, this this thing's been played in so many different I think it didn't see a huge amount of play until we saw something like Delve. I think Delve would really put us on the map. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I don't remember playing this in any format or seeing it played. Was it playing Death Shadow? Or, or something similar probably. to that. Where, if you're playing Gomax, why not? Or, if you're, or, or like uh, some kind of like um, Grixis control where you want to power out a Tasca really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And Tasca was the hot shit in modern for the longest yeah, time. I absolutely. lost my, my first top eight of an event with one of White Death and Taxes. I lost in the finals to a fucking Tasca deck because Tasca was the new shit and I couldn't yeah. beat Colligan's Command or Tasca yeah. from that block. And Thought Scour was a card that, yeah, fucked me yeah. up. Uh, cool art, bad card. Fires on on Earth. What would be bad card? Are you talking shit? It's like, fine. Have you read it? It's a three mana, two damage to target creature or player with flashback five. Oh, it's it's a it's two for one in built. Dog. Fuck off! This is a high pick. I I wouldn't go as far as to say this might be my pick, but I'm pat one right. one. Okay, I'm, I disagree. I'm not quite right. so high on that one, but fine, that's fine. Removal? Yes, no, it's removal. Fine. And in chaos draft, that's fucking premium. Okay, fine. God damn it, John. 
Sure, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you this can tap the enchanted creature. It's this like is... a pacifism that you have to keep paying one on. It's a pacifism so... with cumulative upkeep. Yeah, it's not good. It's, yeah, you, you tap them and then you tap them and then you tap them and yeah. Saving grasp. Obviously, off colour flashbacks. As yeah. you have saw with Fire to Thunder. Well, it's one blue and then one white and it has a return a creature you control to your own hand. Yeah. And I saw we. Yeah, it is your own. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes you can loop your own stuff. You can redo your ETBs. Cool art, by the way, because. You've got obviously the hand to try and save them. Yeah, the perspective. The thing. perspective. This is one of the flavors we saw, by the way. There's a, there's a, the, the most commonly played one in Eternal Formats is Ray of Revelation. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of cards that have two flashback costs with the, with the allied color. Yes. So this was like the blue, white human. Well, you've also, also got vampires. Ancient Grudge. Ancient, oh, yeah, Ancient Grudge probably sees more play than Ray of Revelation, yes. to be fair. Yes. <laughs> but Ancient Grudge was a reprint from the original. Because Ancient Grudge is an old card. Time Spiral. Right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Where Ray, it, Ray Revelation was reprinted as well. Ray Revelation is also in Time Spiral. Yes. Yeah. So actually, they, this whole cycle with it is a cycle. I think they just fleshed it out, one. right? Yeah, yeah, they repeated two of them that added these. Unless these might have been Time Spiral as well, and no one can remember because no one gave a shit. Also, was a Bump in the Night in there as well? That's a the black night. and red. I guess Bump in the Night probably sees more. All I'm thinking of in Ray Revelation is a cover in Flashback from Graveyard. But actually, you're right. Ancient Grudge and probably Bump in the Night might see more play than Ray Revelation now. Uh, okay, here we go. We've got. Black Cat. First Cat. Zombie and a Cat. I mean, it's it's a also the effect's pretty good. If you abuse like rebuy this a few times, discarding a card at random is pretty grim. Yeah. I mean, you've, we, we've seen it with um, Aristocrat decks that pop up in standard now. If this was put into standard, mm -hmm. this would be an absolute gas card to play yeah. with like, the oven and shit. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, cool. Uh, this one, I mean, Evolving Wilds. Classic. Absolute classic. This wasn't the first print of Evolving Wilds, right? We had Terramorphic Expanse for years. Yeah. Or was it the other way around? Was Evolving Wilds first? No, I think Terramorphic Expanse was like, around in like. Uh, was before that. Zendikar? Or Lara? I think, I, think I feel like it was in like a Future Sight or Time Spiral block as well. You might be right. That might be the first time we saw it then. Was yeah. it Lara before Future Sight? No, it's after. Were, I think that this was the time, second time they, they, they decided to do another were. version of it. Yeah. Um, so they now rotate between the two depending on which one fits the. I don't flavor. think Terramorphic Expanse has been reprinted for quite a while. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Why is Evolving Wilds? Consistency, I suppose. Evolving Wilds, they're, they're both It's easier to write and spell. I don't know, but like, they're both mechanically similar, like the same. They are literally the same card apart from by name. So I guess it just means you can just consistently just have Evolving Wilds with different arts for the plane and then you've got consistency. But you're right, I can't remember the last time I saw Terminal from Expanse. Yeah. It might be real old because this was, this, was in, this was in Khan's block. They had the promo one with the foil as well mm -hmm. and the release day and shit. You might be right. That silence me. I, I, are you at Camp Evolving Worlds or Camp Terramorphic Expanse, John? Uh, Evolving Worlds. Why? I, I just I think I've had more experience playing them. The word Terramorphic, John. Uh, it's very cool. Normie. So this is a card that highlights a mechanic of the set, which is playing things from a graveyard. Oh, it's the one that draws cards. That's also in Commander this year. That was yeah. me, uh, Jessica Neck. Yeah. Uh, whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, draw a card. So there's a lot of flashback cards in this set. Yeah. I think Obviously, this we've is seen a couple of them already. Past and Flames this set, right? That was, no, that was Innistrad. Was it? Innistrad has Flames. I think, yeah. Did Innistrad actually have flashback? Was Lingry Souls this set or that set? Well, they both have flashback because of Snapcaster. Ah, oh, so the flashback wasn't in the set. Okay. Yes. Okay. It also had stuff like Rolling Templar as well. Yeah. And like Runic guys. Repetition, Spider Spawning. Obviously, oh, spawn, spawn, all of that stuff. Yeah, okay. I was trying to recall yeah, whether or not the journey. So this this stuff. card is very very good if you want to be in the blue red flashback. That's Mystic yeah. Retrieval. Yeah. Uh, there's one. Is that one that shoots them when you flashback stuff? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, yes, I can't remember what it's called. Yeah. yeah. So that's a pickable card. I mean, in Chaos Draft, you ain't picking that shit though. No. Uh, so that's the first uncommon. Second uncommon. Bright Pack Alpha. This card's real good. Flash. Buffs a creature when it comes in, blocks so, so, really well. You know, I said how good this card was as a yeah. blue flyer that like eats most things. I think the the caveat or the asterisk we should put on that is except the green deck. Yeah. Because green always has bigger shit, right? And this card is absurd. For the same mana cost, you get a 3 3 and it pumps. It can't pump itself, right? Target no, it can pump so, itself. So you it can, can be a flash 5 5. 5 mana 5 5. With Flash. Yes. Was four Flash Evergreen? Was five Flash, Flash Evergreen at that point? Or was Flash just back from the set? And now it's Evergreen. I think so. Was it ever not Evergreen? I feel like it wasn't. I mean, it might have been. Oh no, Ambush Viper is like in a core yeah, set. Exactly. No, you're right. no, well, no, Ambush Viper was also in an Instrad. Was it? The, was it in a core set though? I can't remember. Because that time's been not really evergreen, but yeah. M10, M11, eh, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, this card is fucking real good. This is my pack one pick one of like that. Oh, here we go. This is a mechanic that no one remembers. Fateful hour. <laughs> hey, 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 when hey, you're hey, losing hey. the game. <laughs> hey, there's, um, 
Mm. There's the fucking Doomsayer guy that makes bodies, right? Yes. I remember that card. I'm yeah. sure I played that card at some he, point. He's tapped to make a human and they get buffed if you have five or less mana. Yeah, five less tap, like. And that's the only one I think I've ever... I think I played it in standard in the white deck. Yeah. Uh, but apart from that, like none of the... As far as I know, and please tell me in the comments section if I'm wrong, I don't think a single Fateful Hour card has seen no. internal play. And that's a Vigilant 4-5 for five, five, five mana though. So to be honest... And Fateful Hour, other creatures you can draw Vigilance. That card's actually perfectly fine. Yeah. A five mana, four five of Vigilance is pretty good. What's interesting with these packs is I forgot, because I'm now looking at the rest of the pack coming, we actually have two rares. Oh, flip cards. First rare. Jar of Eyeballs! <laughs> <laughs> I think that those are just scries, right? No, I think you get to oh, no, find, you get you get to pick the creature. You get to, you get to basically scry X. So basically, so whenever a creature hand. dies, you put an eyeball counter on it. Yes. You can pay three and remove all eyeball counters so you can't do selectively. You look at that many cards deep. So if you have, if you have ten hand. counters on it, you look ten cards deep, put one card in your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library. So it does not scry because you can't put them back. Yeah. yeah, so you just get... It's card selection. I don't think it's very good. Uh, three I, mana to play and three mana to. Activate. I might pick it in Chaos Draft World off again. It's one of those build around me things. I think but, the thing is that when you when you obviously in limited in limited, obviously you o only have forty cards to dig at most, right? Sure. So if you have your creatures dying over the course of a game, be able to look five deep might be enough to kind of get yeah. And I guess in limited as well, especially Chaos Draft, you've got like two good cards. The rest of your cards are shit. Mm -hmm. So this card allows you to eventually just dig for that card, especially yeah. if you've got anything like like recursions back into your library. But I think. I think I would be tempted if I got like a blood artist, a couple of cards that sack yeah, themselves. So I probably might take this. I probably should take this though. Yeah. This card is just functionally a better sure. card. But. Yeah. What's the other rare then, John? Well, we've got we've got the check the check cards. For those who don't know, those check cards. So like, instead of having a flip card that constantly flipped over it in and out of the sleeve, you just tick off the one you've got. Have everyone in your deck box you can play with that. You can do that limited, and you can do that in normal. See, it's just occasionally now. Like, yeah, they yeah, they, they come up for like um, the Nicol Bolas. Nicol Bolas is the most one. Yeah. Uh, token. Human. The fateful hour. Human. Also from Gather the Townsfolk, perhaps. Okay, Vince, this is, this is a quick one for you. <laughs> I've seen it now. It's a demon. Yeah. Do you remember what the what the face of it is though? Well, it says Arch Demon agreed, and it's some smaller shit demon, some priest. We have Ravenous Demon. Ravenous Demon. So it's a four four for five mana. It does not fly. So I was about to say, oh, that's pretty good. Sacrifice a human, transform Ravenous Demon, activate his ability only. It can cast a sorcery. So it's a five mana four four that transforms when you sacrifice a human. So obviously you've yep. got. The tribal synergies there. Well, you get human tokens off of things like Gather the Townsfolk exactly. stuff as well. Yes. That's a 9 9 demon with flying trample, but at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a human if you can't tap Arch Demon of Greed. And there's no That's a classic to... kind of gin drawback. Demon. What's Demon? The Demon's Lord of the Lord Pit. Of Pit. Lord of yeah. Pit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the thing that I like about this card is that I think if I've got like the, the fucking Blood Artist in the first pack, as well as pack two, oh, I'll you definitely go take this. crazy with it. Yeah. Because like, you second. The thing is, just, it's probably going to be a 4 for the majority of time, then just turn to a 9 and I'll turn you to kill him. Yeah. It's a 9 9 with Flample. Yeah. With Flample, John. Yeah. But I wouldn't be doing it early because the amount of humans you have to sack yeah. might be quite low. Yeah. Again, another human synergy card, weirdly. I guess yeah. we opened two... I say weirdly. We've opened two packs from the same fucking set. So that's oh, not that block. weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the same block. Right. On to the... Oh, pack one, pick one, John. What are you taking? Um, I think is. I mean... I think maybe you did convince me with this one. Maybe just because removal's removal. Maybe I was a bit harsh with my initial. I think, I think you were incredibly harsh personally. Okay. But I think this isn't in contention. That's not. No. You wouldn't play. You, you might need your final one for your pauper deck. <laughs> um, I wouldn't first pick demon for sure. I wouldn't pick, first pick jar of eyeballs. Uh, I think it was. But this is a f so funsies. I might pick this. Yes. But I'm not contextually. Then a chaos draft. Then sure. Why not? Um... Otherwise, I think it's one of these three. Like, I can't. It depends how I'm feeling. I think this is weak in this. But well, I mean, I'm I think what it means because like, usually, if you're if you're drafting an unknown format, blue white flyers generally get you. But there. everyone in Chaos Draft goes into blue white flyers. Yes. So I'm or between big, these two. Big green. Yeah. But having two removal spells in one card is so good, especially yeah. when everyone's cards are True. shit. Yeah. I guess it, the the fact that it does shoot uh, players or creatures. Yeah, you can end the game. Yeah, you it's can... a low, low cost of nine mana. You can yeah, I mean, them. for them for nine mana, sometimes it just gets you there. <laughs> but also just killing <laughs> creatures, right? Like, I mean, imagine you're put, someone else took this in the pod and you play against them. Yeah. And on the, and they flipped it and they hit you for nine. Next turn. No, but if you instant speed, kill their human in response that's, that's, to the trigger. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And then they're like, oh, I can't. That's like a demon. I don't take have eleven. Take nothing. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm I'm between these two. Yeah. Um, I do like playing big green and limited. So I'd probably take the green thing. Yeah, I, I, I'd err uh, towards big green. The other problem with the fire thing is it's two colour. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, now we come to the main event. Mm. We would have sat through like 20 to 30 minutes of us talking about old sets that we haven't played for years. This is Zemnica. If this is a first print one, it I could have tell. treasures yeah. in it. Uh, apparently this barcode will tell you, but I'm not going to bother looking it up because I can't bother to Solid. look it up. Apparently the second print one can have the same barcode as well, so it's not even guaranteed to tell you. Great. Uh, treasure cards were basically like the fucking the hidden list stuff. The hidden treasures. That was like jewel land. So people went to pre-release. And I, I, remember, I remember this. I was sat in Borders in Southampton in this city here. I was at the Zendikar pre-release. And people were like, oh, have you heard about hidden treasures? I'm like, no, this is like early days. You know, mm-hmm. I was yeah. hardly on any Facebook groups or any of that shit. I don't think even Facebook was around. I in MySpace that was more one. Well, this is 2008, mm-hmm. 2009. Where the fuck is it, John? I think it's 2009, Zendikar. Point. Uh, is there a date on it? It's copyright. 2009. 2009. So I might have been more on MySpace than Facebook. I think I might have been on Facebook. Anyway, I think we're excited because yes. of the treasures. So the so other you could get mocks, uh, uh, well, Power 9. So the thing is, they didn't reprint that stuff. It wasn't like the masterpieces now. What they did was they took a load of stuff that they still had at Wizards HQ and just stuck it in the pack, supposedly. And there were stories and people were like taking pictures yeah. of getting this stuff. Well, the reason because it was uh, the adventure set, wasn't it? Yeah. So the whole, so the whole. Let's talk about themes. So the other sets we didn't talk about that were horror and then the redemption part and all sort of stuff. This was Indiana Jones the set. The idea is there were uh, creatures that were band together like D. This is D and D the set in a way. The ally mechanic is a group of creatures or adventurers getting together and going on an adventure. Was that adventure was through a very very dangerous land full of like shifting and very mana intense. Lambs. Because it was, it was allies in Zendikar and World Wake, right? I believe so, yeah. And yeah. then Rise of the Eldrazi was when... So in this set, in Zendikar and in World Wake, we had this hedron, these, these like diamond-like shapes in the sky, and they we didn't know what was in them. Then we found out it was Eldrazi, which was really cool at the time, and then we went back to Eldrazi and they kind of ruined Eldrazi. Right. Anyway, pack one, not pick one, but first card, Highland Berserker is a 2-1, two, 2 mana human berserker ally. It has three fucking creature types. Whenever it enters the battlefield or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may have allies you control. Not just anyone, but you may have ally. You may have ally creatures you... Yeah, yeah, it's not talking. Gain uh, first strike at the end of the turn. Yeah. So basically, you can turn your creatures to have first strike by playing any other ally after this and slam in and they can't block, block properly. This yeah. is a very, very good limited card. Zendikar was very aggressive and limited. As yeah, Zendikar card was known to us. be like... Balls out fast. Yeah. Well, the equipment was pretty good. All the low-cost creatures were pretty good. And bear in mind, this came into play and had first strike. Give you guys first strike if they were allies. Then you played more allies afterwards. And you got more, and more, more and more triggers going. So this card's pretty good. Yeah. This card's pretty good. Adventuring gear. A one mana artifact equipment with a well, one mana activation equipment. Landfall is one of the mechanics. So the idea was that the, the, the lands were shifting and changing underneath your feet, and you have to say, you know. Uh, quick, have your wits about you and this bag is like one of the bags that it's uh, an adventure across yes. this land to carry and the idea is that when you play a land the creature carrying this bag gets plus two plus two into end of turn I remember playing this at my pre-release I don't remember necessarily if it was any good I think every turn it just pumps your creature it yeah. just pumps it off your land every turn yeah I mean giving your creature plus two plus two every turn I mean you've got you've had like I assume in your career you've played spells that give plus two exactly. plus two. Exactly, so you're making every land do that. Yeah. But the other thing as well is that there's an argument like would a one mana equipment that equips to one give plus two plus two permanently? Probably yeah. not. Like, Trust right. Machete yeah. is plus two plus zero. I, I guess the there's set. also the, with the money cards of this set obviously you have the fetches. So lands entering the battlefield you can still have the trickiness of finding a land off of a fetch land pop in and then give the buff at instant speed. Imagine picking this pack one pick one in Chaos Draft because you've got a fetch land in the last pack. I mean, at that point, you're fucking loving life, yes. right? Five mana, five, six. Vast well, Wood Gorge. I mean, it's just a beater, isn't it? Yeah, I've attacked with my fair share of these in my time. Also, the, so the worms on Zendikar have these like fucking mental predator mouths. Yeah. They have like, these fucking mandibles. Not only, is it, not only is it the predator mouth, but it's also the inner pink Alien sock of mouth doom. Too. It's like, yeah. it is fucking horrendous and I'm here for it. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's Vast Wood Gorge. That's a pretty good limit card. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not so, really a, a good Pretty average body weight. Our next ally is a Nimana Cell Sword. It is a four mana two two human warrior ally. So all the same creature. Oh no, Berserker and Warrior different. Whenever Nimana Cell Sword or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus one plus one counter on Nimana Cell Sword. So this is interesting because these are allies. So there was two kinds of allies essentially. You have allies that buff all allies, or allies that get buffed when other allies appear. Yeah. So in this case, this one, and there's a couple other ones like Harder Free Blade and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I was about to say that card. That's one of my favourite from allies Wake. from the set. The, the the double white one. Yes. So when it ATBs, it gets a counter. It, so it's a two two with first strike, and every ally after this grows it. Isn't it one two, and it becomes like a two three? It becomes two three. I remember it being very good in cube. Yes. For a while, it was a cube card that's mm-hmm. been a little bit outclassed by recent things like Anna Fenzers and Gideons yes. and shit. But 
Yeah, that's a pretty solid card again. And yeah. it's a four mana three three, right? Yeah. That's what it is. It just grows and grows and grows. And then if you if you if you do get any more allies, it's just gravy because it just gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. yeah. Here you go, constructed, oh, here we standard, go. and to an extent modern playable in like yeah. the, uh, the Naya Zoo decks and stuff. An insect, 1-1, one, one, called Planet GP, but every time you get landfall, it gets plus two, plus two, and it only has first strike at all times. So, so basically, if you play this, and you play your fetch in standard and crack it, this creature's now a 5-5. Five, 5-5 five. Five, five with first strike. <laughs> and you just swing with it. two mana, like, incidentally, fetching lands that you would have otherwise, it, yeah, it's beastly. It makes things like far seeks and stuff be like pump spells in your aggro yeah. deck. It's bizarre. Absolutely, or more yeah. mid-range aggro deck, I guess. Uh, Caravan Herder is a giant with lifelink. It's a 1 5 for 5 mana. As always, white gets the short end of the stick for I the mean, most it, part. It's a bit of a brick wall, but uh, as we said, like. I mean, in an aggressive format, sure. Like, I mean, Chaos Draft, it probably is fine as well, I guess. But I mean, there's, I'd probably pick this, 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 or this over this. I think historically, the car is basically draft red black. Right? I guess if you know that though, yeah. and everyone else is doing it on the table, maybe, maybe take guess. your one five life linkers, stick an adventure gear on them, and slap the maybe, shit out of them. Maybe no, or or go red white with step links. Yeah, um, yeah, but I mean those cards are hotly. And yeah. What I'm trying to say, I guess, is cards like these, no one's taking them. No, so you could just go <laughs> fucking crazy with uh, like, zero fours and X one four or higher, like <laughs> dot deck. Here's a kraken hatchling. This thing will one day drop going to kraken. But in the meantime, it's just a zero four that shows up now and again in core sets and sucks, and no one should play that card. Yeah. I guess it's good in the um, what's the fucking god from Theros that taps things? We can do a P. Uh, Fenax. Fenax. There you go. There, there you go. go. No, it's terrible. It's not even a wall. It doesn't even get like buffed by the wall no. synergies and stuff. Shield mate, a defender, core soldier, ally. Uh, you put this off camera a little bit. Oh, sorry. Core Soldier Ally, Defender 03. Whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus one plus one counter on it. So, again, a very defending white card. As you can see, you want it's, to get shafted. Because, because, like, with the allies, you'd think that they'd be aggressive, but this one's the opposite. It's so unaggressive. So far, like, the two white cards we've seen. So defensive. I forgot that white was this bad, but these might just be some two of the worst white commons that we've seen. Potentially, yeah. Tangle Snap. It's a fog. But for things without trample. Tangle sap, that's very weird. So basically, if you're in the green deck and you've got trample creatures, yeah. this card is an absolute fucking. Or if you've got the ally that gives you things trample. Yeah, then exactly. Just slam in. So you, you attack, they do some blocking, and you're like my creatures still do damage, yours don't, and they yeah. just and they die. It's horrible, 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 horrible. That said, outside of that, it's terrible. Yeah. So it's just a very. It's a conditional fog. Like, here's a card. Here's a card that's interesting. A Gomazoa. I always think of it as Gaizoa in my head. Go Gomazoa. A Defender Zero Three Jellyfish. And when you tap it, you put each creature it's blocking on top of its owner's libraries, then those players shuffle the libraries. Is there like a lure effect in this format? Uh, probably. There might be, yeah, maybe. But, but the whole point was. as well. Like... It's a Zero Three that just like block. It's flying as well. It's a flying yeah. Defender. It blocks and puts things on top of libraries alongside itself. The R is a rock floating in space and time. And then it's got tendrils coming out of it to grab stuff. Um, Weren't the Gomas always like, well, jellyfish? Yeah, they're, 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 they they're, inhabit they're the air rock. jellyfish. Right, they inhabit the rock and then... Because like, on Zendikar, rocks and islands float around. They don't float yes. in water, they float around and yes. shit. So, cool hence hence the, the bucket islands in the yeah. uh, Fall Arts. I guess the jellyfish might have evolved to get out of the water and into the sky. John, this is a constructed playable. Ooh. A legacy playable. It's mainly played in legacy. It is two black mana. What do you think it is? Marsh Casualties? It is Marsh Casualties! Woo! Uh, creature target player controls get minus one, minus one. If it's kick finish on three mana, it's minus two, minus two. This blows out different taxes all the fucking time. Interesting. Uh, in Bug Nick Fit. Not Bug Fit, Nick Fit. Bug, bug Food Chain. When you're playing Spellseeker, this is a Wrath that can hit minus two, minus two that you can fetch off Spellseeker. Yeah, it's pretty if good. If you get to five mana, because obviously in... you fetch for the two CMC. Why well, only Bug, John? Why not four? It. Or five mana? Well, most. <laughs> I mean, like, Spellseeker is usually only played in, in Food Chain, as, I'm, as far as I'm uh, aware. Probably. There might be some other Fringe decks. Yeah, play, it, like, and that's the one This card is gas. This card is absurd. It's so good. It's so good it, against Elves, Devon Taxes, yeah. any, any creature-based deck. But one There's side, one side it's, you know, debuffs against all creatures that they have. It's <laughs> pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> this might even be a pretty, it's a pretty good card in limit, I think, as well, to an extent. Yeah. I guess the minus one, minus like one is one, also One-sided infet, infest, right? That's the minus two, minus two. Yeah, for five mana. For five mana, but yeah. <sighs> trap make a snare. So there's Don't... a trap mechanic in this set. It's so just for traps. It's a tutor for traps. I've never seen this card before in my life. So basically, in the set of trap cards, trap cards were cards that had mana, like Archive Trap is five mana, for example. Yeah, if a player has shuffled or sorry, has searched their library recently, it makes it cost only zero instead. Mm -hmm. And all the traps have that mechanic. 
All, so the black all, one, the ravenous one. Not all of them were free. Some of them no, were no, that's reduced. what I'm getting to. That. So yes. The black one, for example, uh, that one is free, actually, as a bad yes. example. The black one has cards going into, into, into mm-hmm. the graveyard, three or four, I think it is, makes it zero. Uh, arrow Volley Trap is one of the big combat tra- tricks of the set. That one you have to pay white for. Yeah, it's white and one, I think, or it's four, four normally. It goes yeah. down significantly yeah. with the attacking creatures. So basically, traps had like trap costs that you could. Summoner's Trap, for example, is someone, again, the done something you get a creature for free out of your hand this is the this is the instant speed demonic shoot of a traps yeah if there's ever a trap deck if they ever bring I traps suppose, back it's broken I mean, in, in the trap deck that's pretty good because you just I don't, the... but I don't think this is the problem you're saying trap deck I don't think dra- traps was an archetype no I think they were like, in, <laughs> incidentally there like, yeah so if you've got four arrow traps maybe pick that up later then. Like, like conceptually you could go well I'm just going to go get the applicable trap for it now but right okay next up Full art, Zed in Carland. Once upon a time, these are special and cool. Now, every cunt's got them. Mm-hmm. I don't want to sound like an elitist there I mean, or a gatekeeper different in borders. some ways. I, yeah. Yeah, you can tell. You can see the set symbols different and shit. Yeah. Next up, Zombie Giant Token. Do you know what card makes this? Quest for the Grave Lord. Correct. A quest. Quest of the Mechanic didn't see. That you get conditions of Mechanic. Right. Well, oh, no, no, no. Right? Quest. The Grave Lord's creature dying. Quest of the oh, Goblin Lord's creature coming in. Yes. Quest of the Beastmasters. I'm thinking of County yeah. County Heart Expedition, which is Landfall. Yeah, which is basically a quest in the sense. Yes. In some ways. Uh, okay, we've got a foil. Ooh. Uh, we've got a rare. Right. They're both lands. Interesting. Oh, is it like Oran Reef? Right, so or... what... <laughs> okay. No, no, no. This one's better than Oran Reef at the moment because I guess... Well, no, it's worse in modern, but it's better in Commander because this is a card that you Crypt- can play Academ. in Sir Conrad. So printed a lot in Commander decks. Yes. I had this card in my folder for years and never found a use for it. And recently, Sir Conrad has been a, like a hot kick for me in EDH. Yeah, yeah. And this card is good because Sir Conrad puts a lot of creatures in the graveyard. Mm. It's a shame that our rare land isn't a fetch land. When I saw that set symbol and I saw this border, I got I a little excited from Marsh Flats. <laughs> and I saw. was like, no. Okay, foil land. What do you think? Is it a basic? Yeah, it's a full arts one. But that's Ooh, pretty nice. That's nice. That's pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. As far as things go, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, pack one, pick one. Oh, blimey. Uh, probably, like, no, in this format, GAPs. Sure. Yeah, I think. In Chaos Draft? Uh, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I <laughs> found these out for people at home to see. If you look at the, <laughs> you look at the symbol, at the uh, symbol, they've... <laughs> okay. Um, my, my picks were... Um, Marsh Casualties is pretty high. okay. I mean, it I probably mean, doesn't is, kill much. X one's dying, right? As a 3 3 Legit. first striker, is fine still. Uh, Vast with Gorger, if you literally stuck. And you want to play big green? Big green's there. I think, yeah. It's, I, I think it's between these four cards. Yeah. Um, honestly. This is probably the safest. And like I said, I like to play big green. This is good. I don't, if you're playing this in Chaos Draft, I would not pick an ally. Well, the thing is, you're going to wheel the other shit allies. Yeah, but I don't... But I'd just rather take a but good card. But my point card. is, it's a 2-1 that gives first strike and then it has first strike for a turn? It doesn't... That's it. It, it conditionally has first strike. Okay, no. It's, it's playing GOP or Marsh. That's Cavaliers. always got... It's always at least... Tra- like, it hits one ones. Or... Or you think really strategically, you take this. That's that's fine. Then you take this on the first rotation, and you get this as your fifteenth card, and then just burn this, <laughs> just rip it. No, apart. no, no! You got like the allies. This is gonna be like a four mana five five when you draw your allies. I hope you've enjoyed this video. <laughs> Let us know for each of the first picks. Tell us in the comment section below. The most what valuable you card, absolutely, is this. I mean, that must be like five or ten bucks, right? Oh, maybe more. It's, it's very nice. It's very dark, but then light in the foils. Yeah. Anyway, John, you're distracting me from my outro. I'm sorry. My very <laughs> Professional outro. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this deck in the video. It's a bit different. It's not just cracking packs for the sake of it. I guess we're talking about uh, stuff we've played in the past, history of cards we liked, what we did at the time. If you enjoyed it, let us know in the comment section below and tell us what your pack one pick ones were. Did we miss anything? Did we misassess anything? Did I remember something wrong? Did LSV not say that the final cards was good? And actually me that said it. I'm now pretending I'm much better player said it in the past. Vince's LSV, confirmed. I mean, I like value, but I'm nowhere near as good a player. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like the video, comment, share it with your friends. Uh, share it with your friends and tell them, oh my god, you won't believe what they opened in pack three. And be like, oh. Maybe that should be the video. Oh my god, you won't believe what we opened in pack three. Doctors hate us. <laughs> yes. Thanks for watching. Ta-ta for now.